Let's start with uh, some Jonathan Taylor news. As it's always breaking, reports coming out. Eagles, Bears, Rams now in the sweepstake for Jonathan Taylor. Where will he land, or is he a Colt this year, whether he likes it or not? I have no read on it. Um, that's not a cop-out. You're dealing with one of the most volatile owners in the entire sport in Jim Irsay. You've got the strange injury situation. You also had Jonathan Taylor handling a personal situation and leaving camp. Then you get to the contract. Now, the teams you listed, it makes no sense to me. Philly's already loaded. The Rams are going to be god-awful. Why would you give up capital to get them? All jokes about F them picks aside. The Bears would be the one. You know, you added Jonathan Taylor. Look, they they drafted Roshan Johnson. They have Khalil Herbert. For me, I don't know where Miami is in all of this. How are the Miami Dolphins not involved, especially with A-Shane, the kid they drafted? He's week to week with a shoulder injury now. Yeah, and you missed out on Dalvin Cook. You would think that, but I guess what has happened is, Kenny, I think that he's going to end up staying a cult because Ursay has devalued him so much. What are you going to get? I wouldn't pay a dime for him. I'm just going to sit and wait for you to cut him because I know you don't want him. So I'm not going to give you anything. It's the worst bit of management I've seen in a long time, but I think in the end, they're, he's going to play hate spike play and – Ursay is going to pay he a, him out of spite. He's going to be a cult. He's going to be a cult. I'll say no, just for fun. I I I'd like to see him get out of there because I like watching him play football, and I don't know if it's going to happen in the blue and white. Rico, we talk a lot about Trey Lance. It's not what I want to get into here, oh, though. Oh God! But I do want to talk about your head coach's response to the Trey Lance situation. He wouldn't meet with the media. He would only do a pre-recorded interview on the team's flagship radio station. How do you avoid that kind of media by doing that? When you're winning, people accept a lot of things. A life of the privileged, Mike. Do you hear that? Oh, please, Kenny. I'm quite sure Kirby Smart can do the same thing for Georgia. So, But when you win, you're allowed certain latitude. The guy who should have been doing the talking is John Lynch. Yep, okay. right there. I don't need to hear from Kyle Shanahan because the reality is – John Lynch made the decision as the team's president and GM. He did the shopping. He gave up the three first-round picks to take what is now looking like a non-drug-addicted Jamarcus Russell. (laughs) Thank you for saying non-drug. He doesn't. I don't think this kid's (laughs) sipping the scissor or to lean. He's just got awful at football the way Jamarcus was. Yeah, to me, he's just not ready. He didn't didn't have a body of work. It's over. It was was You just got to let it go. It's over. It's over. You can't beat out Sam Darnold. Football ain't for you. you know, former number three overall pick. Also got USC. Awful. Kenny. Cooper, Fight on. Cooper Cup apparently running following his hamstring injury. He's pretty much 100%. Is he going to be that guy that you and TJ go, why is he always open again this year? This or is, is a bit done? where during NFL Sunday, it doesn't matter if the Lions are playing or not. It doesn't matter what's on TV or not. I will get no less than two texts from TJ Lang how the F is that guy constantly open? And he doesn't even have to say the name. I know the player he's talking about. It is a mystery that TJ and I both share a curiosity about. Yes, Cooper Cup in a wheelchair, still four yards of separation. Cooper <laughs> Cup in a coffin, three yards of separation. Cooper Cup's head in a jar like Walt Disney, two yards of separation. I can't figure it out. <laughs> can't. None of it makes sense. No. We got Cooper Cup light here with St. Brown, but yeah, it's like he's just wide open. It was like, who thought it would be a good idea to just put, guy, guy catch a seventy yard touchdown? Right, like, how? Like, you put a linebacker on him? Seriously? Okay, good luck. Preseason action continuing. Teams taking different approaches this weekend. The Raiders saying no starters at all will be p- playing. The Chiefs kind of doing the opposite, saying yeah, well, you might see some starters for a drive or two. What's the right approach with the last preseason game of the year? I- I don't know that there is one anymore. No. I think part of it is, does your team have joint practices or not? Right Kansas there. City has not, so they're playing their guys. I think if you're the Lions, with the joint practices, uh, would I have played golf by now? Yeah, I would have given them just something to get some of the rust out, get some form of live action. But overall, I, Kenny, I think it's team dependent now. We've arrived at a very strange place. Yeah. I think especially your quarterback needs – Probably two series so that you, especially for the Lions, playing the Chiefs, Goff can't have rust that Thursday night. No. He's got to be sharp. So whatever it is you need to do, you got to do that. But, yeah, for the Chiefs, they don't play anybody but themselves. 
So you need to see what Mahomes can do up against other defenses. Not that we don't already know, but you got to go out there. And then you also have to tell him, hey, Patrick, sideline is your friend. Okay, my friend, don't, no, no, don't take the hits. Just go out of bounds. This one's for David, who is sunning and funning. Kenny Pickett bulking up, going from 213 to, to 226. Exactly. How does he grab the dumbbells? We, we often talk for, about floors and ceilings. <laughs> what do you got for Kenny Pickett this year? I'm fascinated by him. I love the infrastructure of Pittsburgh. Like, I love how the organization operates. The O line is what worries me. It's very hard for you to develop as a mid level QB with no O line. Mm-hmm. Hell, I'm worried about Aaron Rodgers because they have no O line. I, I, Kenny, I don't have the highest of hopes for him. I still can't see a situation where he's better than Deshaun Watson, better than Lamar Jackson, or better than Joe Burrow. His life is going to be eternal damnation to being the worst QB in the division. Yeah. That's a tough spot to be. It's a great way of putting it. I, I was going to say, I, I could see them maybe getting seven victories, but you're nowhere close to winning that division. I gave David one. I'm going to do something for myself selfishly here. PFF bet usually posts odds on various things happening in the league right before the season starts. Mm -hmm. Jameer Gibbs rushing yards total. The over under set at 625 and a half over over. You're saying over. I'll say over because look, he's a big play guy. He's never going to be a bell cow, but can he get, what was it? 600 and 625 and a half. Okay. Can he get 625 on 10 carries a game? My answer is yes. Because there's going to be a couple of these runs that are 40, 50, 60 yards. I just believe he's going to be a home run hitter. Now, the problem, he's also going to catch 60 balls, and you don't get credit for those. But I'll say over. I believe in Jameer Gibbs. 625? 625 and a half. That's basically about 37 yards a game. I'm saying all 17 games. I will say over. I'm not going to say over by a ton because I I think that it's more going to be Montgomery's going to be the workhorse in the backfield. He's going to, I think he's going to catch for more yards and have more receiving yards than rushing yards. I'm going to say over as well. And that is in football today.